I always try to own up to what I get wrong on this channel. Making NBA predictions is fun, but sometimes I get heat from a lot of people. That's why I wanna make things right. At the end of this video, a special announcement about making a bet this year like I did last season, being wrong and shaving my head. Hawks fans are gonna love this video. Mavericks fans will not. Yo, it's Casey, this is AM Hoops. Hit subscribe, dropping five videos per week so you can be an entertained NBA fan all week long. So, my first prediction I got right was the Hornets being good. I loved LaMelo Ball before the draft. When everyone was hating on the Gordon Hayward contract, I put out a video saying I loved it. I predicted they would make the playoffs Everyone said I was crazy, but we saw pretty quick this team was legit and fun as hell. But what I got wrong was the Hawks missing the playoffs. Dead wrong about this team. I hated their offseason moves. I said that they would miss the playoffs, and it looked like I was right until they fired head coach Lloyd Pierce. That move changed everything. Clint Capella's defense has been great all year long. DeAndre Hunter became a legit two-way player, even though he was injured most of the time. I still think that they are limited because Trey Young is their best player, but I was definitely wrong on them this season. What I got right was LaMelo Ball winning Rookie of the Year. I predicted the awards before the season, and I got this one correct. The fact that I liked the Hornets helped because I thought he'd be playing on a playoff team, but I didn't see how impactful he would actually be. I mean, he is a passing god already. And since becoming a starter, he put up about 20 points, six assists, and six boards on a fun postseason team. Anthony Edwards looks legit too, but LaMelo was the best rookie this season. What I got wrong was jumping the gun on James Wiseman. This I think actually was my biggest regret this season. I totally overreacted to Wiseman in his first two weeks in the league. And I even mentioned the words rookie of the year around him. I was so wrong. I think the dubs made the wrong pick and he regressed so much. I mean, Steve Kerr benched him and his confidence just changed. I look stupid for saying this kid was amazing because at this point, I think the Warriors are going to trade him. What I got right though was Tyler Hero being overrated. I said from the very beginning, not trading Tyler Hero for James Harden was a mistake because he was overrated from the bubble. Now, that's like almost everyone's opinion, but at the time, I got a ton of hate for saying it. It's not that Hero is gonna have a bad career or that he's a bust, but he is clearly not as good as his series against the Celtics, and Harden is one of the best offensive players ever. The Heat took a step back this year and Pat Riley blew that decision. What I got wrong was Jason Tatum for MVP. My stupidest predictions in terms of awards. I mean, he may not even be all NBA. I don't fully blame Tatum because he did have COVID, but he took a step back defensively and the Celtics were awful most of this season. Tatum still had great MVP type moments, like a 60 point game, but overall, I thought the 23 year old was ready for this and I was wrong. What I got right? was Kristaps Porzingis being injury prone. This is another opinion, like the Tyler Hero one, that looks obvious now, but when I first said it, people were really pissed at me in the comments. I basically said, KP is gonna have stretches where he's healthy, but the next big injury is always around the corner. That is what happens when you're over seven feet tall and you've got lower body injuries in the NBA. League history has proven that over and over again. The Mavs are not gonna admit it, but they would trade Porzingis in a heartbeat. What I got wrong though, was Russ being a trade regret. Everyone was wrong about this, so I don't feel too bad, but betting against Russ in the regular season continues to be a mistake. Not only did he break Oscar Robertson's triple-double record, but he pushed that Wizards winning streak that became a play-in spot. Russ also proved me right, because I predicted that DC would make the postseason behind him and Bradley Beal, but I did backtrack, and it's clear now he just wasn't healthy when the season started, but he is still Russell Westbrook. What I got right was Steve Nash being a great hire. In fact, the moment Nash was announced, 
I said the Nets made a perfect hire. I thought he would be able to navigate the egos, and he did that perfectly. Nash wasn't too light on Kyrie when he ditched the team, and he wasn't too heavy on KD when he had his latest Twitter fight. Brooklyn also stayed at or near the top of the East, despite almost never being fully healthy. I think Steve Nash passed every test in the regular season, now we get to see what happens next. What I got wrong though was Julius Randle falling off. What a dumb prediction. In a video earlier in the season, I was trying to predict what would be for real and what was fake from the first few weeks. I said, there's no way Julius Randle will continue to play like a star, and he did. He ended up on my first team all NBA list. I don't feel too bad though, because no one predicted he would go from a career 20 something percent from three to about 40% randomly. Instead, he's gonna get paid a ton and I am super happy for him and for the Knicks. What I got right, Facundo Campazzo. Facu is a 29 year old rookie who came over from Spain. People said that he was gonna come to Denver and make this huge impact because he was a finals MVP in Europe, but I said he wouldn't be anything special Special. My exact claim, if you go back and watch the video, is that he's not going to be like the oldest rookie of the year ever, or even an all-star, even a fringe all-star. And I was right. Okay, dude was way better on defense than I thought, yes, but outside of highlight passes, he was a negative on offense. The reason I said he was going to light up the league is because he's a 5'10 point guard, and MVPs in Europe have never been a guaranteed success story. Of course, Luca is the exception. What I got wrong though, I thought the Miami Heat have one of the best off seasons in the league. I was so excited about Avery Bradley. What was I thinking? Such a bad take. It turned out they had a horrible free agency letting Jay Crowder go. Avery was a non-factor that they traded. The Heat are sneaky good in the playoffs, but it has nothing to do with their off season. My last right wrong before the announcement here is just the standings. So this is a look at what I predicted before the season. The West is all jumbled up. Obviously the Suns at eight is dumb, but having these eight teams in the playoffs was a good prediction. The East is a little different. My top five looks good, a little out of order, but still right. The bottom three has the Raptors, who I completely misjudged, and I did not include the Hawks. Overall though, I'm gonna give myself a right for this prediction. So here's the announcement. I am gonna do another right wrong bet. So I want you guys to put in the comments some sort of bet, okay? The best bets, the smartest ones, and they have to be realistic. No tattoos, maybe. We'll go into a poll that I'll put under the community tab. So until then, look back on last year's bet where I shaved my head because Bull Bull beat me.